Have you ever heard of the competing concepts of working to live and living to work? Working to live means that you work so that you can allow yourself to enjoy other things in life aside from your job, while living to work means your life is based around your work and really not much else. I personally grew up with the mentality that I wanted nothing more than to work to live. I wanted a job that could fulfill my life's obligations. I wanted the financial stability, the job security, and the benefits that came with it. I wanted to do something I was good at, that I knew I had a good chance of granting me a job if I took the right steps. For me, this was the easy way. This was the secure way. There was not supposed to be any stress surrounding my work life if I chose to work to live right? Well, what I discovered is that this notion was completely wrong for me. Society often has conflicting pieces of advice or norms when it comes to a career. There's the American dream, the dream job, the I don't dream of labor movement, the great resignation, and plenty more. Usually they follow either the live to work or the work to live mantra, but I believe there is something missing from these ideas. Let me preface by saying that at the end of the day, this is a very personal decision and everyone has a different opinion. I ask you to take what resonates with you here and leave the rest. I recently read the book The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. It's aimed at creatives, even more specifically writers, to help them break through the blocks and win their creative battles, as the title states. I had an interesting takeaway from this book though. I believe that we should all start to view our work or our job the same way a creative does. Let me explain. The way that many see the work to live and live to work concepts sets them up for disappointment. Let's start with working to live. Here's what I see as the failure of that concept. Let's start by naming a few careers that we we would potentially label as creative. Artists, writers, video game streamers, actors, chefs. But I have a question for you. Would you ever tell someone to be an artist if they didn't enjoy art? Would you tell them to go to art school, learn how to draw, paint, sculpt, slave away in a studio for hours to create a piece of art, to then try to sell or show off at an art show or museum? No? Why not? What if they were naturally good at art? Well, the answer's obvious, right? Because artists don't make a lot of money most of the time. Many fail, so why would you go push someone to go through all of that if they didn't enjoy it? Even if they're good at it, that's not worth it. What about a video game streamer? Your friend loves playing video games. Would you tell them they should start streaming five days a week for multiple hours, market themselves, try to build an audience, and eventually make money from it? Well, they love it, right? So of course they should. But what if they love it, but they aren't that good at doing it for an audience? They love playing with their friends at the end of the day, but they don't want to stream it. Okay, fine. How about a chef? The industry may be a bit easier to get into than the streaming industry or the art industry, right? They make decent money. Would you tell someone to go to culinary school for the salary then? Of course you wouldn't, because being a chef is a very specific job and it's hard work. If that person didn't have a passion for cooking for others, then they definitely shouldn't go for that career, right? So why do we tell people they should go for jobs like investment banker, engineer, accountant, and any other basic corporate job? Because it's stable, because it makes money, because a lot of people view it is something that anyone can force themselves to do no matter how much they hate it because it's a less risky investment than something creative those four to five years of college thousands of dollars of student loan debt those aren't the same it's worth it for a corporate job right I hope you can hear the sarcasm in my voice. Because we're working to live, not living to work, right? If we make good money, we can use that money to buy the nice car, the big boat, the mansion, and then have no time to actually enjoy those things and hate the time we spend at our job 40 to 60 hours of the week. That makes total sense. But here's the thing, some people love their engineering jobs or their accounting jobs. They enjoy crunching the numbers, printing off reports, and doing it all from the comfort of their desk. I'm sure you knew someone at your nine to five who actually enjoy their job. I know I did. Those people were the ones that annoyed me the most. The ones I tried to steer clear of at all costs. They were the constant reminder that I just put so much time and energy to get to a job that I didn't even enjoy. I was frustrated because they seemed content. They talked excitedly about their work. What was wrong with me? So why, as a society, do we convince each other that it's okay to pursue something that doesn't light you up just because it brings what we perceive as stability or brings in a high salary? I believe it's because our priorities are wrong. We're focused on how much we can make. We are focused on climbing some ladder of success, of accomplishment. We're focused on the potential to have a few hours after work to do the things that actually fulfill us. We have stopped valuing the fulfillment of truly enjoying things we do for work. So you might be thinking, that's all great 
great, but what am I supposed to do about that? Does this mean you should go try to monetize that hobby of yours? Not necessarily, but it does mean you should consider what you may actually find fulfillment in. I don't believe there's any reason why we should be in a job we hate unless it's a true stepping stone to the thing we actually find fulfillment from. I feel as a society that we have come to believe that there are only two options, working to live in a way that you work so that you can allow yourself to enjoy other things in life aside from your job or living to work in a way that your life is based around your work and nothing else. But what if there's another option? Living to work in a way that you love your job so much that there is no clear line between your professional and personal life. And it's not that that line isn't clear because you work 24 seven and are constantly stressing about your job. It's because you actually find fulfillment from your job. It actually propels you in life. So at the end of your work day, you're excited for what's next, but not because you hated what you just left, but because you have this sense of fulfillment from what you did. Sure, there will be days where you have to do something you don't love, but it's all for that bigger picture of the fulfillment of your work. So it really makes it all worth it. Living life in this way is how the artist is able to create piece after piece without worrying so much about which one will bring money or success. They create because they love to create. It's how the mother is able to care for her children and nurture her family. No matter how tired she is, no matter how hard it is, she does it because she loves her family. It's how the engineer is able to stay up all night on that project. They know they need sleep, but they are so excited by the possibilities of this new innovation and how it will impact society. So I challenge you to do two things. Number one, ask yourself this, what is your why? What things do you do in life without question? Maybe it's the things that others tell you they could never do. I could never spend a whole year writing one book. I could never raise three children. I could never perform surgery on a person. I could never look at that spreadsheet of numbers all day. Has anyone ever said one of those statements to you? Whether it's about a hobby, your job, or anything else in your life? And once they say it, you immediately are confused. Like, what? I never thought other people didn't enjoy this thing. It just comes naturally to me. It's obviously something I want to do. Well, if there's something that you think that way about, that's probably a great place to start. And number two, spread the word that spending four to five years of your life in upwards of $100,000 to go to school full time is the same level of commitment as working in a minimum wage job for four to five years while you strive to be an artist, write a book, or do anything else creative. Actually, there's a chance that going the creative route will actually save you money in the long term. Let's stop looking down on those who choose a path different from the norm. Let's encourage others to pursue that thing that fulfills them, that brings them joy. Not because of the fame or the money, but because of the impact it creates on others and how natural it comes to them. The more you encourage others to do so, the easier it will be for you to do the same for yourself.